Well hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This morning I'm working on um, the second of a series uh, of uh, acrylic paintings focusing really on a coastal subject and um, really looking at the North Norfolk coast. Uh, that's my first one. The second one I've been working on as I say is um, a quick pencil sketch of uh, quite a simple subject but that's a basis. Uh, sand dunes that we get on the North Norfolk coast and uh, a little bit of distance beach and a lot of uh, the sea uh, and I will put some colour into the sky. So let me lead you through the uh, painting process. Well this is my setup this morning. I've uh, got my board up, got the lamp on, uh, that's my mixing palette, uh, my tray for keeping the brushes damp after they've been used, they lay in the water um, just to keep them damp while they're being used, and a series of brushes ready at hand, and of course the row of uh, colours that I shall use, I uh, obviously won't be using them all but I shall um, squeeze them out into my palette and uh, as you say as you can see the palette has got a lot of um, residue from other colors but uh, that's never a problem to me uh, after a while I just scrape them all off and and uh, start again so let me lead you through the painting process of this lovely um, scene um, that I hope to create well here's the palette that I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use titanium white, raw sienna, vermilion and ultramarine. The same palette that I used for my other coastal subject. So let's get painting. Well, I'm going with the large brush again. Um, it's uh, an inch. Um, hog brush and uh, lightly damped to start with. I always like to damp the brushes before I start to paint and I'm going to take off quite a bit of white because obviously as I've always said just like with oils, acrylics, you use lots of white uh, and very little of the um, of the other colours really. So that's nicely loaded the brush. Then I'm taking some blue because that's the sort of colour that I'm looking for. Don't want it too dark but it's got to have a bit of strength and a bit of red in there because I want the blue to be um, not too intense but there we go. More of a grey blue really I suppose. That's pretty much it. Press it pressing on the brush so that the paint is being eased out of the brush. A bit more white. Changing colour as you paint is not a bad idea um, because that gives you um, a good variation, particularly in this sky that I'm trying to produce here. Uh, it's a, it's quite a, there we are, <coughs> I like a little touch of wispy cloud in there. But what I'm going to do, the cloud really is not going to be, um, <coughs> just a touch more blue there. A little bit more blue at the top in that particularly that left hand side. Don't want too many brush strokes, brush marks in the clean areas. So I'm drawing right the way across. A bit more blue here. There we go. Look at that. And just use the brush to model those um, those colours. There we go. It's good. A bit darker as we come down. I want some darker sort of blues in the lower area as we come towards what will be the beach area uh, and of course the water. Right <coughs> now I'm going to add a bit more red now into that because I want to get um, a nice sort of streak of red and let's add a bit of yellow to that as well because I'm looking for an orangey 
That's better. That's nice. Look at an orangey red. A big orangey red streak in the sky at that point. That's what I'm looking for. And just a touch here and there. Look at that. Freedom you get with with a sort of acrylic painting is quite amazing really. It can be done very quickly. And blending the under side of that. See it? You know, if you see any good brush strokes you don't want to remove, just leave them in. You know, there's some lovely little wispy stuff going on there. Which um, I think is um, ideal for this subject. For what I'm trying to achieve anyway. Now, as I come down against the water, I'm going to add more yellow. Just see what we get with that. I'm not quite sure of this, but... Oh, well, there you go. A bit more blue in there. That's better. There we are. Right. Now, what I've got to do, I'm going to use the mill stick for this. Because this is where I'm coming down into the lower part, where the water meets the sea. And I've got to try and keep that nice and clean. Actually, it's where the sky meets the water. That's what I'm looking to. That's what I'm looking to say, really. So we need enough blue in there. It's got to be blue. It is still the sky. Fairly light there. Nice distant sky. That's what I'm looking for in this lower area. You know, a, a sort of like a moody sky, right in that far distance. Yeah, let's just come a little lower down with that. A bit more colour required, a bit more white going in, because I want this to be fairly low down, so let's see if I can bring that down just a little further. There we go. Press hard, try and get that, that level as near as I can at this stage. can always be adjusted, but um, it's those greys that I'm looking for in that distant sky. Lovely. And that... I think is pretty much my sky painted in. Good, now I'm going to put the distant beach in. I'm not going to put the uh, the land at this stage. We'll put the distant beach in. And that, the land will sit on that. So I've added raw sienna. I've cleaned the brush. I'm adding raw sienna with the white. Now that will give me my my distant beach area and start of the land. Then it's going to swing round, so it's getting a nice bit of tapering to it. Then it comes round there, so it could have a bit of a turn, but you just got to watch that you get the turn correct to have, for the perspective. That's my. That's the biggest thing when you do, when you turn tracks, beaches, and anything to this degree. Yeah, I think that that does it okay. Then, as I come forward, I'm adding more stronger colour just there, and that's going to taper off as well. And that gradually goes away into the distance, varying these colours, trying to keep it fairly, fairly cool. 
then I'm going in with white as I come in to this foreground beach that sort of runs away really like that so I'm going to have a sand dune there and this beach just continues through here and that will go to get lost in the water in that foreground area there we are so that's pretty much the start of the beach okay now the water goes in now the water is going to be lighter this time than the sky because we've got a darker sky and it's got to have it's like a greeny hue to it so it's although it's blue and white it's got to have a bit of that sort of greeny hue so you have to put yellow with that to make it slightly on the greeny side to start with now I'm going to have to use the mill stick again just to support um, let's see what we get here from this along the horizon holding that line very very steady because it's vital that this goes in at a reasonable go whoop we go let's raise that there but I do think it wanted a bit of height on the end just bringing it into the sky a touch just that overlaps there we are and that runs nicely to that um, to that beach area and then it just turns and comes down there we go that's perfect now we're adding more blue as we come forward like that just try and just keep that fairly smooth there we go perfect and that's the way I see this beach scene really you know I've been to North Norfolk many times and uh, have seen similar sort of um, beach scenes with the sky and the sky does reflect in the water so I'm putting a little bit of red to that so that now the water will have a little bit of warmth a little bit of that warmth in it so a little bit of red has gone in to that area and that just sweeps away like that okay. so there is a little streak of that red there don't want too much but it's nice just to have there we are that's the sort of thing I think will be there in the water a bit more white with that don't let go too dark in the foreground there we are and that's going to go like that so we've got a little bit of that just a bit of streaking you know you have to marry the picture together you know it's not all about you know what you see but it's what you know looks right I suppose now we're adding a lot of white to that and that's going to go there because we're going to have a sand dune on the left here as well and just lose some paint now because I want to get that into and just gradually lose that into the beach so as we're not really to try and get that perspective correct Yeah, I think that's pretty much there. And we'll bring the water along there like that. It's, it's just coming into this foreground. Good. Okay. So basically that is the, uh, the water. Now we're going with those lovely sand dunes that, uh, that you get here in or in the on the North Norfolk coast 
Now, let's. Th this one is going to be lighter. It's going to be quite high up, so it's heading off down like that. That's one of those bold sand dunes that come round and down like that. And into the foreground. There we go. Perfect. And this side, this one, is going to be a little darker. There we are. And that's going to be somewhat smaller. Like that. Now we're going to have some darker touches within this one as well. We want some highlights, but we're going to have some darker passages. Darker passage there. And a blend of colour there. Within that. That's perfect. Try and keep these brush strokes sort of make it look as if they're been put in, you know, with ease. Um, that's always a good sign um, of a good artist, really, if they can um, put in the uh, the colours fairly easily without too much um, attention. Hair from the brush there, let's try and get rid of that. Yeah, I like the idea of this darker stuff. Let's just improve on that. Get a nice blend of darker touches. Here and there. Not everywhere. Darker there as well. As that goes over the rise. Like that. Typical of these sand dunes that you get on the North Norfolk beaches. Lovely. Let's just blend those a little now. Just with a drier brush. See? Little touches of red going in. That side first. Got to just pick up that sky in there. It's all a matter of blending the whole thing together. There we are. Good. Now I'm looking at the distant land. Now I've changed to a number four hog brush and I'm putting on like a distant purpley blue because that's the way I see that distant land. There you go, that's perfect. It needs to almost disappear into the distance like that. Quite narrow, I'll blend that again shortly. Then we lose a bit of paint because I want that to sort of like go to not infinity but it's got to gradually blend there we go so that you can't quite see where it finishes now take some paint off the bus and put a bit of yellow in there that we've got in our palette because that is going to blend it into the lower part where that beach is. You take a bit of the paint that you've used to blend that through. There we go. Now we clean the brush, get rid of a lot of the paint and then we just pull some of that back so that we bring that beach back 
into that land. Got a nice bit of mood to that distant uh, beach. And that's what I like. That goes, sweeps right through. There you go. So we're losing a bit of that in the distance. Now we're back to that distance again. A bit more red in there now. A bit more blue. I'm going a little darker. Because I'm going to have another area of land there and that technically is slightly further away there we are now more blue more red and a bit of yellow this time but quite a bit of blue too because this one is going to be bringing that in from this side it's going to be that darker sort of land affair there so this Norfolk coastline it's a lovely coastline it really um, oozes some um, um, atmosphere and I'm adding just a little bit of lighter tone to that now drawing that in let's just take a little bit of that don't want that to be too dark and that is going to gradually blend with that that's not a bad idea and quite dark as it runs out of picture now we've got to clean the brush again and blend that with your foreground or middle distance beach trying to keep a linear effect to this picture like that going away like that yep let's just add a little bit of light and that to be a little bit lighter there Just at that point, just nice and light there. That's it. Smooth it, smooth it through. Just want that to finish. That to just gradually get lost in the distance there. Almost into the water, really. Like that. That's it. Now I've changed to the rigger and I've mixed ultramarine with raw sienna to get some greens. Now I'm not going to get a strong green with that, and these are for the um, sort of like the um, grasses that stand up and out of this um, of these sand dunes and all you've got to do is just flick them through like that and you mustn't have them all going the same direction some have got to be in different some have got to be quite a bit different shapes and sizes of course but that's basically it more yellow a bit more blue get them a little darker most of the real dark ones will be that side but let's put a few in here and get them to, to pan out like that and then you can sometimes have a break and then we see some more here slightly smaller ones perhaps get 
typical of what you see on the North Norfolk coast or any sand dune areas really you know and just have a bit of fun flicking them away into this foreground will be blended shortly All right now I'm using the half inch or the small brush to just to blend that colour into the beach. So we've got a little bit of that greening, green running through it, just marries them all together. Which I think uh, is what's required really. Let's try and pull them all together. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much as I would have um, expected. Look a few more in here. And then I'm going to use the brush then to flick out the back of the handle to flick out some lighter ones. Then we come in with some darker ones again. So you have lights and darks, lights and darks. It. Then we take the brush again and soften that in like that. Just using a bit of stippling motion there, just to give that to uh, change that effect. There we go. Then we flick in again. blue of those. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, that's fine. Just pull that through down into the beach area or the dune and just pull that up there like that. Perfect. Now the ones on the right here are going to be somewhat darker. So let's try and get this flicking away here as we go. Really get them lifting up. happy with that. Similar sort of approach in this lower area here like that. Lovely. While I've got that darker colour I'm going to put a little bit of darker tone this side too. I just feel it needs a bit of the old accents here and there that, uh, that it's lacking. It's a, it's a delicate process with this rigger that I'm using. Some of you may have slightly different riggers to me, um, but that uh, seems to work. And as that goes out of picture, I'm just pulling in a few 
a few more in this lower area just as if there's a, a mound or something just out of picture it's throwing up these um, it looks so much better once the um, once the tape comes off right now I take this damp brush again and just I'm going to pull the, the yellowing up into the dune like that or into the grasses like that go now I'm picking up a little bit of beach color now Weaving that in, trying to blend those. A bit more of this lovely beach colour. Let's go a little darker. Just feel that needs to be a bit of darker tone there and there. There we go. To be bold sometimes with these um, the application of the colour. Not always uh, delicately laid in. Just a little bit of white with a little bit of yellow just on the edge of that dim there like that and slipping down there there as well wouldn't be a bad idea to have a small touch of this just coming down there just to show a little bit of contour to that area there we go Blend that shortly, remove the paint from the brush on the palette and just blend that through. Don't want to lose that red if I can help it. Like that red, seems to work quite well. Yeah, a little bit more work to do. I'm just adding a few more in this lower area, same technique, just lifting off one or two here and there. Um, that's put in, I may have a little touch here, I don't want to overload that, perhaps that's overloading, right? No, that's it. Now I'm going to take this brush again and just do a bit of blending, let's clean it. A smaller brush, just to finally finalise the blending of all, of all these areas, because these sand dunes are all blown up in the wind and they're all nicely sort of cleanly blended you know with the the wind and 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 the rain and everything so it's mainly the wind here on the north norfolk coast that, that uh, gives them that lovely sort of flowing motion that you get just going over that again because I feel I want to just soften that away just blending now really making certain that don't overpaint any areas that we need to leave but um, that's it just a little bit of somewhat more yellow stuff what have we got on the brush all oh, right let's just Bit more yellow yellowy tones there there we go that's what I'm looking for into that dune where that spreads down lot don't want to get rid of the red I like that yeah just blend that into that I'm gonna take those away just pull that down there we are and we're not far out, I don't think. I think we're getting there. Really, really think we're there. One, two little touches. Now what we're looking for is figures and birds in the sky. Now these figures being at a quite a distance have got to be quite small. So all we do 
we just make certain that you can always make them a lot taller. I'll let, let's bring them up to here. That's a better place for the figures, I think. I'll blend those through shortly. Um, really, it's 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 an impression of figures, really, more than uh, anything. If you put the bodies on first, then you can always just shape the brush, and hopefully just drop drop a head in like that, head in like that. That's already got the head, but there's a couple of figures all together there. That's perfect. And then all you do, you use a damp brush just to spread that paint into the into the beach. It just blends them all together, really. You know, it just pulls the whole thing together. Gives it a little bit of. Um, interest around that uh, around that sort of area and then the lovely blue birds in the sky blue grey again and we're going to have one there going to have Bring that wing up just a touch. There we are. Another one there. We have two there. Then we're going to have some smaller ones. Just gently touched in. And some of these very distant ones can just be dots more or less. One's a bit larger. So that's a bit nearer to us. That's it. And then we just get little little dots just creeping around in the distance. Just make that one a little bit more like a, a bird rather than just a dot. Go. Um, and that is pretty much finished. Finally I've taken the surround away as you can see uh, and just comes the signature which is um, quite important as I always say because you do need uh, to put your mark on it and I'm going to sign down here my normal sort of signature for the, uh, an oil or, or indeed a watercolour I suppose but There we are, just adjust that a touch. There's the signature, Colin Steed. Make that a bit more elegant, shall we? Well, brilliant. There you have it. Another view of the North Norfolk coast here in the UK. There you are, uh, that's the finished painting. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and if you have, please subscribe to the channel. And if you are an acrylic painter or if you're someone that is looking to uh, get into acrylic painting, these sort of quick subjects are, you know, a good starting point really. So stay tuned and thank you very much for watching.